the fact that you are listening and you are watching as you know each trial that we go through. You, you know each need that we have and that you have answered our prayers before we even ask or think this morning. I want to lift up Fred and Linda and their family uh, in this time of, of uh, sickness. Pray that uh, you would be there and, and above all that Jesus Christ may be lifted up. Pray for comfort, pray for wisdom for Fred and Linda and others that in the family that know you. And uh, we just, just pray that uh, some who don't may come to know you. Pray for the Ramies. Pray for the ministry. Uh, Lord, this is uh, your word going out. And uh, we just uh, lift them up in, in prayer for uh, our healing and uh, recovery from the disease and strength and that you would would provide all that is is needed. We pray that you be with those who are not here. Pray for Al and Mary as they're traveling, that you bring them back safely. And be with us now as we look at the book of Revelation, as we see ourselves and our country and our world uh, unfolding in your word. Uh, it just gives us confidence that you are in charge and you know what is happening and that you have the outcome in your hand. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you turn, turn to Revelation 16, 12, and we're going to read from there and then on uh, through, maybe through the end of the chapter this morning. Uh, this is overlapping just a bit with uh, last time that we need to, uh, we, we need to tie it to, together. Uh, so, Revelation... 15 to 16 and 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its waters was dried up. Water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Uh, in other words, that at the time this was written, the river Euphrates was the edge of the Roman Empire on the east. So any country from the east that was going to invade or invade Israel would come across the Euphrates River. So this is getting ready for that moment. And uh, uh, the, the river being dried up will just give them easy access uh, to uh, come and take part in the in the great battle that we know as and we'll read this is our Armageddon. So this is this is the uh, preparation is being made. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. You know, I thought I had this fixed. Wouldn't make that noise. Uh, <clears throat> apologize. For they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So Satan is using, if you read these, uh, uh, the beast, <coughs> which is the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, who has been uh, spreading the Antichrist gospel out of all this time, uh, they are the spirits of demons performing signs, and they go around the whole earth. So it is gathering the whole earth <laughs> to battle, basically, um, against, uh, well, we'll see. Okay, 15, behold, I am coming as a thief, blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Now, we can spend quite a bit of time discussing this. We may not get any farther than this. I don't know. Uh, 
because some of you will have comments or some will have questions and uh, some I can't answer maybe, or probably, uh, but we need to sort this out. First of all, I think it's clear we're talking about a time when the kingdoms of the world are coming to battle against, we know, God's people, against, against Jesus himself. They're, they are coming and they are gathered. And it's going to happen in a place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Um, so we refer to this as the, the Battle of Armageddon. Now there's some questions that come. Uh, the word Armageddon uh, literally means a gathering place. It is used and refers to a city uh, of Megiddo in Israel. And uh, so many people have come to the conclusion that the uh, Battle of Armageddon will take place in the valley of Jezreel, which is where Megiddo is. And uh, uh, this is uh, quite possible. This is, this is maybe more likely. Uh, there are others who take it not quite so literally and look at the meaning and say it could be the Kidron Valley right next to the city of Jerusalem that it's, it's uh, talking about when the battle takes place. Um, we, the Bible is, is not completely completely uh, clear on this, it's just exactly the geographical location, except that we know it's in Israel, and Israel is a small country, so uh, it, it's pretty well pinned down uh, to, to begin with. Uh, so, now, I, I put the question up there, is, uh, is this the second coming of Jesus? Now, let's keep that in mind. We, we refer to this, uh, to the second coming of Christ. Christ came one time, the first time, his incarnation, we know, <coughs> we celebrate that at Christmas and Easter, that his resurrection, that was his first, first coming. Uh, we know he is coming again. And we know that he will be here to win the battle of Armageddon. And uh, so there, there's two ways of looking at that, and I, I, it's not a draw conclusion right now. Uh, it, it, but as we look at the scripture, I think it becomes clear. Many people look at the second coming of Christ as a series of events, beginning with the the rapture. He doesn't come at that point. He doesn't really come back until the end of the tri seven years tribulation. That's when he comes back. And so many people will say the second coming of Christ is just that event. When he comes back for the battle of Armageddon, he is back on earth. And that's his second coming. And I, it's, it's really kind of a matter of semantics and how you define terms. Uh, but, uh, we know that all of these events will take place. We don't know when they will start happening, but we know that once they start, we have a pretty good timeline laid out. Uh, and, and as we went through Thursday night uh, a couple weeks ago, we are looking for the next event, the rapture, where we, uh, the Christians go. The next uh, series of events is the seven-year tribulation with the last three and a half years being the Great Tribulation. At the great end of the Great Tribulation is the Battle of Armageddon, where Christ comes back and defeats Satan's armies completely. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look first at, at uh, uh, scriptures related to the uh, to the coming of the uh, 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 Battle of, of Armageddon. Here I've, I've, I've got uh, uh, a couple of verses, and I didn't mark one. Anyway, I, the, the dragon comes back, and they did not prevail. I'm looking at 12 and 7, and they, they had the battle, the Battle of Armageddon, 
And it says in there, there were uh, uh, 100,000 soldiers that came. Now, to, uh, uh, if, if I didn't write that up here, so I can't get it. If somebody gets the exact verse, raise your hand, read it out loud. The 100,000 soldiers, now put that in perspective, uh, or 100 million, excuse me, 100 million soldiers come. All the troops in World War II on the Allies combined was only 5 million. Wow. Right now, China has less than 2 million. Mm -hmm. Russia has less than 2 million. The United States has less than 2 million. So uh, that is a huge army. That's a, 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 just a tremendous army that comes for the Battle of, of Armageddon. And uh, uh, so at least where do they come from? And uh, firstly, I think what it concludes when it says, we gathered them together in a place in Armageddon, we have all of the people who support God and have supported God because he brings them from heaven. And we have all the people that support the devil and have support the devil. He brings them from the depths of the earth. That's the only place he can get an army of a hundred million people. So it's a huge, a huge battle, but it is the final, it's the final battle. It is the one that defeats Satan permanently. Okay. Well, uh, let, let's uh, uh, let, let's take let, let's set that aside just just a second because we know that the battle takes place when uh, Christ comes back the second time. We know that Satan is put away, and then at the end of the millennium the thousand years reign of Christ, then he gets an army, and that is the final battle. Uh, what makes this difficult, and what makes it difficult for me standing up here <laughs> trying to, to go through this is that the Bible tells about the events that are going to happen in pieces. And they, we read some of the uh, final battles <coughs> early in the book, we read some later in the book, what we're reading here in chapter 16 about some things, uh, we will be, that don't happen until after chapter uh, 17 or 18. And so trying to put it together in a timeline is, is really tough. But we do know that those are the things that will happen. And as we go through here this morning and read some more scriptures, hopefully <laughs> what, what I've said so far, which sounds a little confusing, we can put together. So bear with me. And if you have some input, uh, raise your hand, and, and uh, we'll we'll have you have you do it. So uh, now we have some input on the second coming of Christ. Let's take a, a look at those. Turn to Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, okay, that's immediately after the seven years, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not get its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with the sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Uh, I think and if you, if you, uh, that that means from the four winds of the earth and heaven, he's gathered all the saints together. And that is immediately after the tribulation. Okay, that's one event that is it's going to happen. Uh, John, yeah. just a question. From one end of heaven to the other, that has a dimension. <laughs> question yeah, of all no, of that. That is a good question. Yeah, that puts a dimension on, on heaven. 
at uh, um, if we think of heaven as a specific place, it yeah. maybe maybe has a dimension. Now we know that the New Jerusalem, the city built four square, uh -huh. uh, which puts uh, dimensions on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a, a good question, but I think we can say heaven is a specific place. place. It is not just an idea or a dream or something like that. It's a specific place. Uh, good point. Hey, Mark 1462. Jesus said to him, he was asked if he is the Christ. He says, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Now he is talking to the uh, false witnesses of his day when he was alive, and he is saying that they will see him coming. Now, we know they're dead. So if they, if we take this literally, they will be brought back when this happens, and they will see him come. Uh, okay, now go back to the book of Revelation real quickly. Revelation 1-7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. And even though they who pierce him. Okay, so when he comes, those people will be here and see him. And the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Okay. So it is a very public event. We, we can gather that from this and and that's why there's nothing there on the, uh, uh, in, in that particular verse, anyway, of when that will, will come. But I think it's interesting, he follows that with the statement, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, and who is, was, to come, the Almighty. Okay, so he is the beginning and the end. We know that. We, he puts that with this verse, so he's talking about the end. About the end. That's, that's as far as we can, we can go. We can't uh, make conclusions that aren't spelled out. <coughs> okay, now, uh, in Revelation that we just read, 16, it makes a mention. Of, uh, blessed are those, uh, verse 15, who watches, keeps his garment. At the same, it refers to being prepared. <laughs> Blessed is he who is prepared for <coughs> this no. uh, And that is an admonition to us. Let's take a look at Ephesians 5 8. <laughs> You were once <coughs> darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Talking to you and me. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So light <coughs> defines what he means by light. Goodness and righteousness and truth are the way we are to walk. Uh, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And it goes on with some good advice and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather it is it exposed them. We should be now, us, living as children of the light. The temptation is to go along with the world, get involved in worldly things, not just necessarily sinful things, sometimes they are. And 
become like one of the ones who is walking in the darkness. Remember, there is no in between. And the theme in Revelation, so I'll keep mentioning it. We are coming closer and closer to the time when we will see. Right now, if uh, the atomic bomb would drop and the United States would walk, be wiped out, there are people who would go to heaven and there are people who would not, who would go to be with Satan in Hades, in hell. There is no in-between. Everybody that we know, everybody that walks this earth, is going to eventually see this. This warning is, make sure <laughs> you walk as what you are. If you know Jesus, you are saved, you're walking in the light, you have the light, walk in the light. Don't turn the switch off, Just leave it on. <laughs> and, and walk in, in the light. Uh, we waste an awful lot of effort, I think, on things that really don't count. Okay. We waste a lot of effort on setting up, you know, we've worked all of my life setting up the retirement account, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things. Uh, they're all going to disappear, all of us, at some point. And I think this going through here should be a reminder to us. And uh, it should strengthen our church if we continue to seek to walk in the light and spend our time and our effort on things that count for heaven. There's nothing else we can take with us. I've always I've said this too before. But, uh, we take two things to heaven. We take one, our relationship with God that we have developed on this earth, and we take and the people that we have led to the Lord. We will see them there. What else do we spend effort on in this world that will disappear when the world disappears? Everything else. That's pretty tough talk, isn't it? Uh, but I, it, it just, I didn't say that. The Bible said that. Point that out to us. Um, okay, First John. 128. What, 228 or 128? What's that? 128 or 228. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> First John 228. Thank you. Uh, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, this is good for either right now, it's a good place to be when the rapture occurs. It is a good place to be if, uh, for those who are saved during the tribulation before the, uh, the actual second coming of Christ at the end of the tribulation. It's just good advice, it's a good place to be. It's a happy place to be, a, a peaceful, satisfied place to, to live. Okay. So it, it's good, it, it, it's just good to take it as it is and follow it. Uh, the thief in the night, this one is a, a verse that causes a lot of discussion in Christian circles. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 2. Thessalonians 5 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. And verse 4 But you, brethren, are not in darkness. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. <coughs> we are not the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, but let us watch and be sober. Okay. Now, 
Um, this talking, does this, uh, the thief in the night, is that talking about the rapture, or is it talking about the second coming at the end of the tribulation? I think specifically it's talking about the end of the tribulation. But it is good advice for us now, yes. regardless. It's, uh, uh, and when the rapture comes, it will come suddenly, like a thief in mind, anyway. So we should, we should be ready. But, uh, uh, here again, let's, let's watch if we're not getting tied up in semantics, but rather know the uh, events that are going to happen and in general the, the order they're going to come in. Uh, so we will hopefully not be here. We know we will not be here if we know Jesus. We know we won't be here. We'll be gone with the rapture. Uh, I imagine there's some, I'm probably talking to some people who uh, are post-tribbers, meaning <laughs> that the rapture takes place after the tribulation. Uh, you know, if you want to, oh, no, that's fine. Uh, there are many, many good people that are. I'm a preacher. That means I'm going to go on the first level. <laughs> Got your ticket already. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but either way, you still have to be prepared. Either way, you have to be prepared. Yeah. And whether you apply this to the rapture or to the second coming at the end of the tribulation, be prepared. Actually, it's before that. Because the way we live may very well save someone else. That's true. That's true. In fact, there is only one reason that the rapture hasn't happened already. There are a few more to come in. Two more people. Doug? Yeah, I, I heard a, a fellow talking one day. He, he said that he was in a great Baptist church and they got a new preacher came right out of seminar and he came in and he said we are going to have to all go through the tribulation and he says my dad he didn't want to go through the tribulation he wanted to be raptured so he says we left that church we went across the street and there go those people they're going to go on the rapture <laughs> <laughs> and so all those people that were sitting in that church I felt sorry for it. All they had to do was go across the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's a good point. Uh, um, it, it, it has nothing to do with the church. That's the point of the, of the joke. I, well, I, I've heard the same thing. You know, there are some very good people who believe that you can lose your salvation if you don't watch. Uh, with Seventh-day Adventists, um, Church of God, it's fine. They're good Christian people. Uh, so we say, well, uh, the difference between my church and yours is you can lose your salvation, and I can't. But the point is, no, God's principles and timing are to apply to everybody, regardless of what the church says, regardless of what I say up here, or pastor, anybody. God is, God's principles apply to everybody. Some people are following doctrine, and some people are following the Bible. That's true. That's true. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. What the church says, or their pastor, or their elder, or their priest. They were listening to them instead of reading God's word. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely that's absolutely it. Okay. Let's uh, talk about Armageddon again. <laughs> it's all in this. Uh, this few chapters here, or two verses here, uh, it's almost as if uh, uh, Jesus put them in there to confuse us. I don't know. We're, we'll, get it, we'll get it straightened out. Uh, Zechariah 14.1 Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. 
Half the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. So at this kind of, stop there for a minute, the whole thing, the day of the Lord, and this is a process. And it is a building up. We, we're, the rapture didn't happen this morning yet. <laughs> but the things that have been happening in the world are building up to the rapture. It's a series of events. They don't just happen suddenly. Uh, probably gathering the nations of the world. We're going to see some of that even before the rapture. Uh, we, we may see the armies. So when you read the news uh, of, about uh, uh, China and Russia and some of those things that are happening, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be out here before it happens because uh, there are some things building up that we are seeing the prelude to that uh, are, are going to happen for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go on. The Lord will uh, let's see. For and in that day his feet will stand, stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. Okay, the, the Mount of Olives is, is a, uh, not just a round hill. It is, uh, has a little length to it. Faces north and south, so it faces Jerusalem on the east. In between Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives is the Kidron Valley, which we read about in the Bible. And uh, that is one of the places that people speculate, some people speculate, that the Battle of Armageddon will take place. Uh, okay, making a very... The, the, the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east excuse me, from east to west. Okay, the valley that is there and the rift that is there, I'll show, show you a couple pictures there in a minute, uh, runs north to south. But it's going to be split east to west, an unnatural event. Uh, then you shall flee through my mountain valley. Okay, it's going to make a valley for some to escape. So the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. We have no idea what that refers to, that we know it's a place of safety. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah, King of Judah, and thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. So it's going to be a gathering place and a taking away and some terrible geographical things will happen. Now, this is a picture <coughs> of the uh, uh, what, uh, Jezreel Valley, which many people believe that is where the Battle of Armageddon will take place. The uh, uh, Mount Tabor is in the distance, and uh, uh, I believe this was taken. I didn't take this, by the way. I was this when I got off the internet, but I stood there. Uh, is uh, uh, Taking, looking across at uh, the mountain that is mentioned. In the now, is all that farms? Yes. That is beautiful farmland. They have the climate, they have the water. In fact, they don't have to irrigate much. They, their problem is making drainage ditches. Uh, and they can drain, they, uh, the Israelis have drained that so that there is a groundwater down at the right level to grow just about anything you want, from alfalfa to oranges, and uh, anything in between. It's, it's not what you usually think of when you think of Israel, you think of dry and, <laughs> and so on, but this is, this is a beautiful, a beautiful valley. So this is one of the places uh, that is speculated to be where the valley, Battle of Armageddon will take place. Now you can see that it's a pretty good sized place that if uh, the blood is up to the horse's bridles, as we'll read about, uh, it, it would be a lot. <laughs> okay. um, here is an aerial of Israel, the 
Late in the north, at the top edge of the picture, is the Sea of Galilee, which is a freshwater lake. It's just a wide spot, basically, in the Jordan River. And then the Jordan River flows from there down to the Dead Sea, which is the big one, where, where it ends. All of that is below sea level. And that valley, that rift, they call it, runs all the way from northern Israel clear down into Africa. And it is moving. It is moving a measurable amount each year, like an inch or two. So that uh, uh, sometimes different things, fences or whatever, have to be rebuilt. <laughs> uh, but it is a, a border. So that when the uh, event that we're reading about occurs, it's going to split from east to west, completely against the natural geography of the country, which makes it clear this is a miracle performed by God. No, no question. Okay, let's read 17 through 21, and then we can say that this, this uh, last part referred to, this is the grand finale. We just got through with the uh, 4th of July. If you watched any fireworks shows, uh, not so many this year, the worst on them some in the past. At the end of the fireworks show, you know, shooting off rockets, all of a sudden about six go off at once and it's a big grand finale. Okay, this is, this is what we're reading about, about here. Uh, I'm going to read 17 through 21 and then uh, the comments are up there. You can read them as we go. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Now if you look that up, uh, which I did, you will get answers everywhere from 80 pounds to 133 pounds. But they, those are huge hailstones. And men blaspheme God because of the plague of hail. That's interesting. That's interesting. All these bad things have been going on, and I uh, think of the big, big hailstones hurt and kill and destroy. Um, I've seen cars that have been through, over in East Oregon, been through a you know little tiny hail and they're just shiny metal. They strip the paint off and fill them with dents. Uh, so it must be uh, they play uh, watching God because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. What is God doing all of this punishment for? Is it not to say, wake up, turn to me? And you will escape all of this. But what is man's reaction? Even in the grand finale, <laughs> blaspheming God, blaspheming God. Yeah. Quite a, quite a thing. Uh, one other uh, interesting thing to me on this, with the mountains and uh, and the islands will disappear. We know that uh, scientifically. There is moisture under the ground still. There's moisture in the seas and lakes and rivers. And there's moisture in the clouds above. If it would all come down to the earth at one time, like it did in Noah's flood, the entire earth would be covered. There would be no dry land. There is enough water to cover all of the earth. Uh, so what it's talking about here <laughs> The islands and the mountains were not found. Uh, 
you know, what, where, do, where do people sit? <laughs> it's going to be, uh, and God is not going to destroy the earth by it. Mm -hmm. But it's just an interesting thing to think of that um, everything would be underwater at this point, mm -hmm. probably. So, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody comes up with the answer to that, bring it next week. And we'll talk about it. Uh, John, it could be as if the days before the flood were theoretically there was a level of um, earth crust over the waters. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be flattened everything out. You know, that's why the waters are up from below because there is a hydraulic layer of water between the earth land that we stand on. So he could be leveling that back out and reforming it back how it was before. That, that could, could very well be. Yeah, turn it back just the way it was before the flood. And, and that, uh, you know, for people who doubt the flood was worldwide, you know, science today would say, yes, there's enough water right there to do it today, if it would all happen. It would all come down at once and come up from the ground at once, if it did, and those, those flood. So, thanks, Mike. Uh, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us some things to know and some things to speculate about. But Lord, what we do know is that if we are safe in you, we are safe. And that you have our future in your hands. Help us over the next few weeks to straighten out to the, some of the things that you have said here and some things that I have said uh, that we can put it together into a, a, a story. And again, we pull out the principles that you would have us to know and apply to our lives. We pray now that you be with us in the next service and throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.